Hello, thanks for joining us today. My name is Devin Blankenbiller and I'm the pastor at Abundant Life Church. And today I just wanna encourage us uh, in prayer. This is week three of Praying with Power. And the uh, specific title is Praying in Times of Chaos. Praying in Times of Chaos. I'm thankful that our in a, we might be in a season where things aren't as chaotic as a nation as it was two years ago during the pandemic and all the different issues that we were facing. However, some of you are going through some really difficult times, challenging times, seem overwhelming, seem over like out of control. And what do we do when our life is just thrown upside down? And, and sometimes that happens to us where just all of a sudden our life just seems like it's going great and then bam, something happens and it just spins out of control. And it's usually in those moments where we don't know how to pray. We usually, it's in those moments that we say, God, what are you doing? Or we say, God, where are you? And maybe some of us who have faith or maybe some of us who know how to pray, it's in those moments that we almost get paralyzed and we don't know how to pray. And so today I just wanna encourage you really quickly in a passage in, in the book of Psalms. And I'm just gonna read from Psalms 46 today as an encouragement to us on how to pray in times of chaos. And I'm gonna read the whole Psalm to you if you wanna follow along or just listen and be encouraged. But Psalms 46 says this, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. God will help her when the morning dawns. Verse six, the nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice and the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. So come behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations or destructions on the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow, he shatters the spear, he burns the chariots with fire. Verse 10, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. See, um, this passage that starts out, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. You know, why is it that sometimes when we're in trouble, we fail to recognize that God is with us and present? You know, that, that first line there, God is very present in times of trouble, that means nothing if we don't understand and have faith in who God really is. See, God becomes so small in our times of chaos and our problems become so big. Let me ask you a question. What do you think is bigger, this tomato or the sun that's out in the sky, right? I mean, yes, I think it's easy. The sun that's in the sky probably is bigger. However, if I put this tomato up in the, in the air and I, I hold it close to my eye like this, this tomato can completely eclipse and block the sun that I no longer see it. Why? Because I'm holding this tomato so close to my eye, I can't see the magnificent sun that's, that's in the sky, right? And this is what happens in times of chaos. We bring our problems that are in our life or our problems feel so weighty and they're so big and we bring them so close to our eye that we cannot see God anymore. And my encouragement to you today is that we need to continue to be rooted and know the strength and the power of God so that when these times of calamity comes, we say, it's okay, I know God. I mean, just think about what this says. It says, I don't have to fear, even if the earth gives way, even if the mountains be moved in the heart of the sea. I mean, that's crazy. Wait, God is so incredibly big and, and awesome that I don't have to worry even if the whole entire earth gives way, even if the, the um, Mount Everest crumbles down into the ocean. I don't have to be afraid. I mean, that's the size of God. He's bigger than that. And he is awesome. 
I mean, God is awesome. I mean, that word says that we should be filled with awe, that we should be filled with wonder and amazement and even dread at who God is. I mean, the, uh, verse six, like, puts fear into my heart about the size and the, and the awesomeness of God. Verse six says, the nations rage, we see that, the kingdoms totter, but he utters his voice and the earth melts. I mean, just think about that for a second and, and meditate on that, I, I think. So God, you can just utter one word and everything that I think about, everything that I know, everything that I think I own, everything that's on my schedule, everything in the whole entire world melts away. No, God can't really do that. Yes, he can. It just took him a couple words for him to create everything and just takes an utterance and it can all be destroyed. See, that's that puts things in perspective. That takes my problem that I think I have and it brings it out of my viewpoint so that I can see the greatness of God. I mean, God said, let there be light. And when he said that, I mean, light shot forth out of his nature and out of his being at 182,000 miles per second, which is the speed of light. And, and, and God created the earth and God created the stars in the skies, right? I mean, and sometimes we just need to like step outside at night. I mean, tonight, this is what I want you to do. Just take a step outside of your house when it's dark, look up to the sky and just recognize that God created every single one of those stars, right? Psalms 19.1, the heavens declare the glory of God. Every single one. I mean, there is, the scientists say there is anywhere between 100 and 200 billion galaxies in the, in the uh, universe. I mean, we can't fathom the size of the universe. Our Milky Way galaxy, the new studies have said that our Milky Way galaxy is somewhere around 1.9 million light years in distance. I mean, we can't fathom how big that is. I mean, a light year is, 5.8 trillion miles in just one light year. And, and our galaxy, just one galaxy, is 1.9 million light years wide. And God created it all. And that's why when, when Psalms 46 says, he utters his voice and the little tiny earth melts, it's true, a true statement. You know, and, and when we're in times of calamity, we need, to, we need to minimize the size of our problems when we compare them to the size of our God. And that's why this, this passage says that we should come and behold the works of the Lord. Verse eight in Psalms 46, verse eight. Come and behold the works of the Lord. Listen, I, I love that passage. I wanna behold his creation. I wanna behold just his, his grace and mercy. I wanna behold and be speechless in, in how he sent his son Jesus to die for us and, and, and made a way. I wanna behold that, you know? But it actually says, come and behold the works of the Lord and how he has brought desolations or destructions on the earth. Like, that God already flooded the earth one time. If you go back to Genesis six, uh, Genesis 6 and 7 and 8 when he flooded the earth, how, how God has already brought down nation after nation after nation when you look back on history, whether he's brought down the Egyptians or the Assyrians or the Persians or the Romans, he brought down every single human being who ever raised a hand, a fist of pride against God, right? I mean, he brought them down low. I mean, this is the God that we serve and we should fear him. But here's how it all ends. Verse 10, it says, so be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And that's what we need to do. We just sometimes, when, when our life is out of control, when our life is just filled with chaos, right? When we just don't know how we're gonna make it through the day to day, right? What we need to do in those moments is we just need to stop. And we need to be still. Being still. It's just shutting up, stop thinking that we can fix everything, humbling ourselves before God, recognizing that he is still in control of every single atom on the face of this earth. He holds it all together and he will get us through this time. We are called to be still and know that he is God. So many times when our life is out of control, where is our focus? Our focus is always on ourselves. 
our focus is always on what do I need to do or, or how is this going to affect me. We become very selfish and a lot of times we're selfish in those moments because of the pain that we're going through. But the word of God says that we should be still. We should behold God. And sometimes we just, we just sit in silence and be quiet. It says to be still. And then the second part of that is, and know that I am God, right? There is a knowing. There is a faith that is so real that we know without a shadow of a doubt that there is a God in heaven. And that yes, he knows us, but we are commanded to know him. We are commanded to behold him. We are commanded to look to him. We are commanded to set our gaze upon him. We're not commanded to set our gaze upon our problems. We're not commanded to set our gaze upon um, some person of influence. We're not supposed to set our gaze upon what other people think of us and what other people are saying. We're not supposed to set our gaze on our worries of tomorrow or next week or the week after that. We're called to set our gaze on God. Be still and know that He is God. Listen, that's an answer to every problem when we're afraid, right? When I'm really feel fearful, I just need to know God. When I don't have direction, I need to know God. When I'm overwhelmed with sin and I'm tempted to sin or I'm caught in addiction, I need to know God. Because when I know God, then I see that I want to follow him. When I'm idolizing people or things of this world, I need to know God and recognize that he's bigger. Listen, when I feel guilty and I don't think uh, I can come to God, I need to know God. I need to know his grace. I need to know his mercy. I need to know that his love is new every single morning and great is his faithfulness. I need to know God. Listen, when I need purpose or direction in my life, I need to know God, right? I need to know him. I need to know what he calls me to do. When I feel hopeless and I feel like there's no way anything can happen, I need to know God. I need to know that he has the power of resurrection. I need to know that in him all things are possible, right? I need to know him. Listen, when I'm looking for acceptance, right, and, and I feel not worthy or good enough in the eyes of other people, I just need to know God. I need to, I need to not worry about what friends think. I need to get my acceptance from God and God alone. And so, uh, so we still ourselves in those times of chaos. We get our eyes fixed on God and we know God in those times of chaos. And then it says, I will be exalted. And that's what comes, we worship God. We come to a place where we recognize, God, you are so great. You are worthy of all of our praise. And our praise and our worship is not just singing songs in church. It's not just putting the right channel on the radio. Praise is giving our entire life to him and coming to a place of surrender. And I, I think honestly, I think sometimes in those places of chaos, it's where we need to surrender the most because it's in those moments where our life is out of control. We have no clue what's going to happen, right? And what the outcome is going to be. And it's in those moments that God is asking us, will you worship me? Will you completely bow down and surrender to what I have planned for you in this season? And it says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted, I will be lifted up in the nations, and I will be lifted up in the earth. And so in those moments, we can be still, and we can know that he is God, and we can lift him up, and we can worship him, and we lift him up as we surrender our lives and say, you're worthy of it all. You're worthy of every ounce and being in a fiber of my being. I give it all unto you. So I hope this is encouragement, but let me end with verse 11, this last verse then, which is actually repeated. It says, um, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in the earth. And then it says, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Listen, we can know then when we're still and we know God and we worship him and we surrender our lives, then we know, wait, the Lord of hosts is with me. I don't have to be afraid. I truly can take refuge and find strength. And really, it doesn't matter if the whole earth melts away or, or the mountains fall in the sea. It doesn't matter when chaos comes into my life. 
He's with me and he is my fortress, right? He is my stronghold that I can be at. I mean, there's no safer place to be than with the Lord. And, and again, this is the Lord of hosts. What does that word host mean, right? I mean, a lot of times when we think of the word host, it can be translated, he's the Lord of all the stars or he's the Lord of all the armies, like this big host of armies, right? This big host of people. But I believe that he's the Lord of every one of those galaxies. When I talk about the 100 or 200 billion galaxies, I believe that he's the Lord of every single star in every galaxy. He's the Lord of every planet. He's the Lord of every person on this earth. He's the Lord of every animal, every bird, every fish in the ocean. He's the Lord of every tree that we see. He's the Lord of every every organism that we can't even see. He's the Lord of every molecule. He's the Lord of every atom. And it says, know this, the Lord of hosts is with us. And God of Jacob is our fortress. And we can take a deep breath. We can be still. We can know that he is God and he is with us. So take courage today in your times of chaos. If you're currently in a time of chaos, my heart grieves with you, I'm praying for you. Please reach out for prayer. Please bring other people in your life to find encouragement. I do think that's a very wise thing to do when we're in times of courage, I mean, times of, of chaos. But be still and know that he is God. He is your refuge. He is your strength. God, thank you again for your word that brings encouragement. I just pray for everybody who's watching this video right now. May you give them that encouragement. May they know you, God, and may they know your power and your love and your strength and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen.